for most musicians, uh, you've got to do a lot of different things to make a living, and one of it is one of those things is teaching and uh, and doing clinics around the country. And we just thought, uh, what a great opportunity to get the kids who go to schools here to actually come out and meet their fellow musicians in town. And one of my good friends is a guitar player in Portland, John Stoll, who's like just world class. And so I try to get him every year and then team him up with another world class guitar player, a little guitar summit. Part of the fun is like, let's see how he does it when he yeah. gets here. And let's see if, you know, maybe he'll do something different next time or maybe, you you know, it's all, and it's all about, you know, that, that kind of uh, yeah. conversation going on. Yeah. That's the fun of it. You don't want to just crush it thinking that you know the chord that's supposed to be there because you memorize it on the right. chart yeah. of the song. We're not a marching band. Yeah. You know, the kind of freedom we're talking about, though, um, comes from really learning your craft. And as you become a better player, you also become a better listener because the part of your mind that was preoccupied just with the technical execution of the scales and the arpeggios and keeping track of the changes is free. When those things become second nature, then you get to the point that you can't have the kind of exchange we're talking about where you're not concerned about letting the music breathe because you're not going to forget the chord changes. Everything is very clearly internalized. So you teach yourself to do this through repetition. You do something enough, the basic mechanics of playing the tunes, the basic harmony are clear. Joe Locke, we've, he's a, just a great communicator and a uh, great player, and so we had him doing improvisation clinics, Eric Alexander doing saxophone clinics, uh, Canadian singer Kate Hammett Vaughn doing a vocal session. We usually try to get at least four or five different artists, and hopefully we can keep expanding on that too as the years go by. It's like anything. Imagine uh, a high school baseball player being able to go and sit down with Ichiro Suzuki and talk to him about his swing. And then they go and they watch him do that. They watch him steal bases. And it's the same thing with music. And so far, it's just it's been phenomenal, the people who come out and, and they, they stay all day. And that's really great. And it's kind of a validation of all the things we've thought about with putting on our own festival. And that's going to make our So can you hear that? Fun thing for us is to be able to sit down when the concert starts and be able to see all the work that we put into pay off when there's hundreds of people here enjoying the show and coming up to us afterwards and thanking us for what we do. And so that's what we remember in the end is that, you know, we're going to have this great concert, everyone's going to have a great time. And the fact that we're able to provide this community event that didn't exist three years ago and now to see it kind of becoming ingrained in the community of Ballard and seeing people walk down the street and see a poster and, oh, it's jazz festivals coming up. So that's really nice.